Hey guys, even here, so the New York Pro is starting today. In about 3-4 hours maybe, we're gonna see the open guys on stage. But before we get to that, we have a couple of last moment updates. So last night, Matt Jensen posted a couple of very interesting photos. For example, the most recent physique update of Nick Walker. And right off the bat, I gotta say, he does look drier than a week ago. A lot drier. He didn't lose the fullness though. He's not overly dry. I think these guys are nailing it perfectly. I think Nick is gonna look phenomenal on that stage. And I gotta say, Matt Jensen is definitely one of the top coaches in the world right now. He really knows how to pick his guys. He's a great coach, but like he's a pro coach. What does that mean? It means he's great for the pros, for guys who are at the top, because that's where he is. He worked with the best of the best, and he has some of the best bodybuilders in the world right now. And I see a lot of guys, a lot of like beginners or like people who are trying to get in shape or trying to get on stage for the first time hiring these high-level coaches. I made this mistake as well. When I was prepping for my first show, I hired a high-level coach. And, you know, these guys have hundreds of clients. They're only really devoted to the top guys, to the pros. So if you're not a top pro, you can work with somebody like myself. I prepped guys for shows, like a pretty good guys. Uh, as you can see right here, this guy was really good in classic physique. I help guys who are natural, who want to stay natural. You can get on stage, even without anything, really. This guy right here, completely natural. But a hard worker, for sure, and he has decent genetics. And if I told you what this guy was taking, the photo before was natural, and then he took a little bit of something and he blew up. And with a good peak week, he looked dry and hard. He did really well for his first bodybuilding show. I'm prepping girls as well for stage or just for lifestyle. Uh, so if you guys are looking for somebody who is going to devote themselves to you, who is not gonna work with, I don't know, hundreds, hundreds of people and not even pay attention to you, you can hire me, you can DM me on Instagram. If you live nearby or you're willing to pay for my expenses, I can travel with you and help you, you know, closely monitor your peak week in person, help you with your tan. Uh, I usually also yell pretty hard from the audience to, to help you hold your poses. It's fun. I love doing this, especially with competitors, but also with lifestyle athletes. When somebody is hardworking and they devote themselves and we see changes uh, monthly or even weekly, it's awesome. It's definitely awesome. And again, the thing with the pro coaches is, yeah, they are the best in the world for a reason they know more than me for sure but again they have so many clients that they won't help you as much as you need so again if you want somebody who's gonna be there for you who is also not too expensive pro coaches are way too expensive and it's not like they have some sort of magic i mean they're just very good if you are on the top level if you're not again hire somebody local or you can hire me before i become one of the top coaches <laughs> anyways guys let's continue Nick Walker, one day out, he definitely, again, does look a lot drier, but not drastically. I was kind of afraid that Matt is maybe gonna succumb to the pressure of the entire bodybuilding industry, everybody criticizing Nick for being too soft, too, I don't know, not in shape, looking off, and so on, and one week out, and I thought maybe he's gonna dry him out too much, but no, no, Matt has experience, he probably experienced similar things before, actually he spoke about the same thing happening exactly to Nick Walker in 2019, I believe, before Nick turned pro, I mean, that year he didn't turn pro, but he looked much drier on the stage than, I think, a couple of days out when he was at the wings, so I think they did something similar here, he does not look like he over dehydrated he looks full i think i mean i can see like the roundness in the back in the legs his legs don't look like they lost any size well at least from the back i don't know about the front but i don't think his legs are not good they just don't look as big as his upper body when he hits the poses so maybe if he lost those 10 pounds maybe he lost some fullness from the legs or maybe he lost a lot of it from his midsection and he's gonna look tighter, his waist is gonna look smaller, and therefore, in proportion, his legs are gonna look even bigger. And just like any other body part, when it is dry and, like, full as well, it looks bigger than it actually is. So I believe, overall, his entire package on this stage is gonna be much better, much, much better than Pittsburgh Pro. That was, like, him being completely off. You know, that was, like, the opposite of the peak week. Which is usually the case, one week out, you look the worst, and then as the show approaches, you look better and better and better each day. That's why I love the peak week. That's why the peak week is my favorite part of the prep. It may be most difficult if you're doing some drastic things, but you're seeing changes daily. Every morning you wake up and you look better than the day before. 
And that's the most fun part about bodybuilding, probably. Also, stepping on a stage, if you enjoy it, I love it. Some people don't like it, but as far as the process, as far as the prep for the show, which is usually bodybuilders' favorite part of bodybuilding, I'd say the peak week is the most fun. And you can see crazy changes in Nick Walker's physique right now. His glutes did not look this dry on Pittsburgh Pro Stage, nor did his hamstrings. And we'll see, we'll see the full package tomorrow, I'm guessing he's gonna be even drier, or even fuller, just overall better on that stage in a couple of hours from now. Alright, next photo, also very, very interesting, also posted by Matt Jansen, Quinton Araya, here is his physique update at one day out of New York Pro, at this point, I mean, he might make little changes throughout the night, he might dry out a little bit more, maybe carve up a little bit more, but that's pretty much it. He's not gonna get much different from this. This is what you're gonna see on the stage. In his previous physique updates, a lot of people were worried that he looks downsized. That he looks smaller, like probably way too small compared to what he looked like deep into his offseason. It kinda looked like he lost a lot of muscle during his prep. Some people were even speculating that the photos he posted were old from 2022, which, I, I mean, it crossed my mind, but I didn't think that was the case, and now after seeing this photo from one day out, yeah, I'm pretty sure those photos are recent, because here, he doesn't look that much bigger, really. Now, you gotta take into consideration that this guy is six foot one, I believe, so he is, like, much, much taller than Nick Walker, let's just put it that way, so, I mean, in comparison, when he stands next to Nick and the other guys, he's gonna look much bigger, but... When he stands alone, like, you can see that the other guys have definitely more thickness, especially in the legs. Even from the side, I mean, from the front it was the most visible, but even from the side, you can see the leg thickness. It's not where it needs to be. But again, Quinton is only, I believe, 27, 28? So he's extremely young, very, very young. He has all the potential in the world, and that's what we're all saying for years and years, and yeah, I don't think he reached, you know, Samson Dow, the level of muscularity, or Andrew Jacked even, no, no, I don't think he's on that level of size, but again, he is young, I mean, Andrew Jacked is how old, like, he's over 40, Samson is like 38 maybe, and he, he became a star when he was 36, before that, he was just an average pro. But I also heard that he was doing still his construction work, he was still not a full-time bodybuilder, and Quinton is that for many years. But still, still, guys, a frame this big, a frame this tall, it's gonna take years to fill it out. It simply cannot happen overnight. It can happen in a couple of years, it's gonna take a decade or so. But again, he might actually do pretty well because of his shape, because nobody has such small waist. Such small joints, you know, wrists and uh, like his neck is small and his, his, his ankles as well. Everything is just super tiny and it looks like everything is blowing up. I mean, his calves are like one of the best in the world right now and his arms are also very good and the chest is also pretty high, pretty full, pretty round, pretty wide. You know, he's wide in the shoulders. Yeah, the back is not the thickest ever and the legs also, but like he has the shape. He has a, he has a really nice physique. And yeah, I know I'm speculating what he's going to look on stage. <laughs> we are only hours away. In a couple of hours, we'll find out exactly what is the case. I could be completely off with my assessment, but you know, I've been doing this for five years now, basically. <laughs> this is my job, trying to figure out what these guys are going to look like on stage before they get to the stage. I try my best to guess as accurately as possible, but it's just a guessing game. Game. We don't know, really. I can't know this for sure. We'll see in a couple of hours. I could be completely off once again, but I don't think so. I think I'm right. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Next up, we got also a physique update from Tony Burton. What exactly am I seeing here? I mean, he looks like his usual self, I would say. I mean, it is under day lighting, so it's not like some crazy lighting to make him look harder than he is. So, he doesn't look super, super hard, but he looks lean, he looks conditioned, I would say similar to Arnold Brazil, maybe a little bit softer, but I don't know, maybe it's just the lighting here. But I have to say, I'm not, like, overly impressed, I will stick with my prediction, I have Nick Walker winning, and then I have Martin, ahead of Tonio, and as far as Tonio, I think he's gonna be battling against Beef Stew and maybe Quinton Araya, that's my top 5, I don't think anybody else is gonna squeeze in, I think Beef Stew might be a surprise, you know, he might, like, play second, 
I don't think that's gonna happen, the other guys have much bigger names, but I think he's gonna look phenomenal, and as far as uh, Tony right here, again, like, he's good, he's in good shape, but he's not, he doesn't have that crazy wow factor, because he's not the biggest guy, I mean, his back is extraordinary, and he's always in shape, and here he's conditioned, he's detailed, but, like, you know, those legs could be bigger, overall, his frame, like, his shoulders could be wider, he could be more freaky, he looked like very small compared to Rafael Brandao, and Rafael Brandao is also like a smaller guy, you know, he's definitely not on the level of somebody like Samson Dauda, so Nick Walker is even bigger than Samson, or let's say the same size, so if you think about it, Tony is gonna look so much smaller than Nick Walker, and Nick Walker is most likely winning, and he's setting the standard for this, for this show, it's size, size is very important here, and we already saw what Martin looks like next to Nick, he's not that far off, I think Tony is gonna be much smaller, and I think Beef Stew might beat him, because he's also big, he, he's bigger than this guy right here, but again, Tony is very polished, he has like, all the body parts pretty good, he has details everywhere, he has a crazy back, so, yeah, it's very difficult to predict this show, very, very difficult, all these guys are phenomenal, but I can only say, I, I have my top two very firmly, Nick and then Martin, and then as far as top three, Ah, uh, it's a toss-up, you guys tell me what do you think, Tonio, Quinton, or Beef Stew, or maybe even Angel Calderon, a 212 guy, I believe he was second at the Mr. Olympia at one point, or third, I think last year he was third, uh, he didn't do 212 at this show, there is 212, and Carrit Baggio is winning that show, I think he placed uh, lower than Angel at the Mr. Olympia, so Angel is doing this show, I'm guessing he's over 212 pounds, he already won a pro show, I believe it was Romania pro a couple of years back, and uh, now he's doing the New York Pro, and he looks rock hard, that's his signature, this guy is like, he gets really, really hard, but I don't know if he has the structure for it, I still believe he's a little bit too small, uh, his legs are also kind of down in size compared to his upper body, uh, I mean, yeah, conditioning is great, but, I mean, I don't know, we'll see, maybe he's gonna surprise, because he's so conditioned so hard, that he might beat some people who we are not expecting him to beat, anyways, you guys tell me what do you think down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and again, for coaching, DM me on Instagram, thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.